Okay, so today we're diving into something really cool. It's a brand new paper about a model called the Hierarchical Reasoning Model, or HRM for short. And why should you care? Well, because this thing, it might just be the key to solving one of the biggest, most frustrating puzzles in all of AI. Let's get right to it. So have you ever seen this happen? It's kind of wild, right? You've got an AI that can whip up a beautiful poem or even generate working code. But then you give it a simple logic puzzle, something you or I could figure out, and it just falls flat on its face. It's this bizarre contradiction that has a lot of people scratching their heads. And yeah, this slide really nails the problem. We're calling it the AI paradox. On one side, you've got these incredible feats, right? LLMs are just amazing at mimicking human language and patterns. But on the other side, total failure when it comes to things that need real step-by-step -step thinking. Things like logic puzzles, planning a route through a maze. That's the gap we're going to talk about. Okay, so what is actually going on under the hood? What's the fundamental flaw here? It all comes down to how these AI models are designed to think in the first place. Right now, the big technique everyone uses is called chain of thought, or COT. Think of it like the AI is trying to solve a problem by talking to itself, out loud. It writes out every single step. First I'll do this, then I'll do that. The problem? It's super brittle. I mean, one tiny mistake, one little slip up anywhere in that chain of thought, and bam, the whole thing just crumbles. The final answer is completely useless. And the authors of this paper, they just say it so well. They say, and I quote, Despite the remarkable success of large language models, their core architecture is paradoxically shallow. Shallow, that's the key word. We're talking about models with billions, sometimes trillions of parameters. But at their core, they're just shallow. They're wide, not deep. They're built for surface level stuff, not the deep, careful thinking that real problems demand. So if throwing more and more data and more parameters at the problem isn't working, if bigger isn't better, then what is? Where do you even start? Well, these researchers look to the best problem solver in the known universe, our own brains. See, our brains aren't just one giant blob of thinking stuff. We have specialized systems. You can kind of think of it like this. There's a slow planner, that's the high level, big picture part of your brain that thinks about abstract goals, like, I need to get to the grocery store. And then there's the fast doer. Those are these super quick detailed circuits that handle the nitty gritty, like actually moving your legs and turning the steering wheel. And this whole idea, this dual system thing, it boils down to three core principles from neuroscience. First, it's hierarchical. The big picture planner guides the detailed worker. Simple. Second, they work at different speeds. One is slow and deliberate. The other is lightning fast. And third, and this is crucial, they're constantly talking to each other. They have feedback loops, checking in, making adjustments, and getting closer to the right answer over time. And those three principles? That's it. That's the blueprint. This is what inspired the whole new approach. The hierarchical reasoning model. The HRM. Now, get ready for this, because this is where it gets crazy. How big is this new model? 27 million parameters. Let me say that again, 27 million. That is tiny. It's a rounding error compared to the giant LLMs it's going up against. We're talking hundreds, even thousands of times smaller. So right away, you know this isn't about brute force. It's about having a smarter design. So how does this tiny model actually work? The analogy they use in the paper is just perfect. Picture a company. You've got the CEO, that's the high-level module. The CEO doesn't get into the weeds. She sets a big abstract goal. We need to launch this new product. Then you have the engineers. That's the low-level module. They take that goal and get to work, crunching the numbers, writing the code, doing all the detailed work at high speed. Then they report back to the CEO. The CEO looks at the progress, refines the plan. Okay, let's pivot this feature and sends it back to the engineers. And this loop just keeps going. Plan, execute, report, refine, until the job is done. And here is the absolute game changer. All of that back and forth between the CEO and the engineers, it's happening internally. 
It's all happening inside a hidden or latent space within the model. It's not writing out its thoughts like the chain of thought models do. It's not talking to itself. It's just thinking the way we do. And that makes it so much faster and way less likely to make a dumb mistake. Okay, so the theory is beautiful, the architecture is elegant, but does the darn thing actually work? Well, this is where we get to the main event. The researchers decided to throw HRM into the ring with the reigning heavyweight champions of the AI world. First up, the Sudoku Extreme Challenge. And look, we are not talking about the puzzle on the back of your morning newspaper, no, no. These were specifically designed to be absolute monsters. They require tons of backtracking and deep logical steps. Basically, they're a nightmare for both humans and, as it turns out, most AIs. And the results? Honestly, they're just shocking. The biggest, baddest LLMs out there using their chain of thought method got a big fat zero. They couldn't solve a single one, not one. Meanwhile, our tiny little HRM model, it came in and solved 55% of them. It's just a completely different league. Just let that sink in, 0%, from the most advanced, most expensive AI models ever built. And that 55% from HRM, get this. It achieved that after being trained on just 1,000 examples, 1,000. That is an unbelievable display of data efficiency and raw reasoning power. David didn't just land a blow on Goliath. He knocked him clean off his feet. But, okay, was Sudoku just a fluke? The researchers didn't stop there. Next up, maze hard. The goal is simple to state but hard to do. Find the absolute shortest path through a big, complicated 30 by 30 maze. Again, a classic test of deep sequential planning. And you can probably guess what happened next. It was just as stunning. The big LLNs tried to talk their way through the maze, and they got totally lost. Every single time. Another zero. But HRM, with its internal CEO and engineer system, just quietly planned its way through and found the shortest path almost 75% of the time. So another total wipeout for the state of the art. This really drives the point home. The Sudoku result was no accident. This reveals a fundamental architectural weakness in the whole talk it out chain of thought method. And again, look at this number, 74.5%. And here's the kicker. It was trained from scratch. No pre-training on a trillion documents from the internet. It learned how to solve mazes from the ground up proving it has a totally different kind of learning efficiency and power. So, look, these results are amazing, right? But they're more than just good scores on a test. They could be pointing us down a completely new road for AI development. But honestly, the most mind-blowing part of this whole paper came when the researchers peeked inside the black box to figure out how HRM was pulling this off. Okay, this is where my jaw just dropped. The researchers measured something called the participation ratio. It's basically a fancy way of measuring how complex the thinking is in different parts of a system. And what they know from neuroscience is that in our brains, the high-level planning areas, our inner CEO, have a really high complexity score. And the low-level execution parts, our inner engineers, have a low one. Well, guess what? The HRM model spontaneously did the exact same thing. The high-level CEO module developed these rich, complex, abstract ideas, while the low-level engineer module stayed simple and focused. It didn't just copy the brain's function, it started to copy its structure, all on its own. And remember, nobody programmed it to do this. This just happened. It was an emergent property of the design. This suggests that the whole hierarchical idea isn't just some clever trick. It might be tapping into a core, fundamental principle of how intelligence itself is organized. Which leaves us with a pretty massive question, doesn't it? By building AI that's actually structured like a brain, are we finally getting past just creating fancy parrots that mimic us? And are we actually starting to teach a machine how to think?